بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليمًا كثيرًا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس افتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الناس افتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Last time we reached verse 20 of Surah Al-Nabah and today we will start with a new set of verses verses 21 through 30 which deals with the description of hellfire and the punishment of hellfire we ask Allah to protect us from the punishment of hellfire Allah Azza wa Jal says إِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ كَانَتْ مِرْصَادًا لِلطَّاغِينَ مَا آبًا لَابِثِينَ فِيهَا أَحْقَادًا لَا يَذُوقُونَ فِيهَا بَرْدًا وَلَا شَرَابًا إِلَّا حَمِيمًا وَغَسَّاقًا جزاء وفاقا إنهم كانوا لا يرجون حسابا إنهم كانوا لا يرجون حسابا وكذبوا بآياتنا كذابا وكل شيء أحصيناه كتابا فذوقوا فلن نزيدكم إلا عذابا 
which means indeed hell has been lying in wait for the transgressors a place of return in which they will remain for ages unending they will not taste therein any coolness or drink except scalding water and prelims an appropriate recompense in proportion to and comparable with their crimes indeed they were not expecting an account and denied our verses with emphatic denial but all things we have enumerated in writing so taste the penalty and never will we increase you except in torment allah azza wa jal in these verses is telling those who denied from the disbelievers of quraish what is awaiting them what is the consequence of denial what is the outcome of rejection and disbelief and he had subhanahu wa ta'ala he shed light on some of the punishment of hell and its description inna jahannam kanat mirsada indeed hell has been lying in wait shaykh al uthaymin rahmatullah alayhi said it is awaiting the oppressors and the transgressors ibn kathir said it is ready for them to enter it al qushayri and as the judge said people will pass over it and no one who's deserving of punishment will be able to pass it al hasan al basri rahmatullahi alayhi said no one will be able to enter jannah unless he passes over hellfire it is waiting for those who are deserving allah azza wa jal says in verse 71 of chapter maryam wa in minkum illa wariduha kana ala rabbika hatman maqdiya which means there is none of you except he will come to it. None. No one will escape coming to hell and passing over it. Al Hassan al Basri narrated a story related to this verse. He said, One man saw his brother laughing with joy so happy he said were you not informed that you will pass over hellfire referring to this verse he said indeed he said do you have any guarantee that you will be passing it safely he said no who does he said, then how can you laugh so joyfully? How can you take the matter so easily, in other words? Abdullah ibn Rawaha, may Allah be pleased with him. As mentioned by Imam Abdul Razak in his tafsir. And I want you to Imagine the situation, brothers and sisters, and, and visualize what took place. 
This great companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was lying down one time, placing his head in the lap of his wife. In normal situations, this is a very emotional position, right? Between a man and his wife. It's normal. He's lying down with his head in her lap. So he started crying. So she, she saw him cry. And then she started crying. He asked her, what are you crying for? What makes you cry? She said, I'm crying for your tears. Look, emotions still. I'm crying because I saw you cry. But what makes you cry? She asked. Now look, look at this companion. May Allah be pleased with him. And this is how brothers and sisters, this is how they deserved the rank and status they reached. Because their main concern was how to please Allah, how to have the consequence be a pleasant one. He said, as for me, I cried because I recollected the verse and he recited this verse for her. And Allah is telling me here that I'm going to pass over hellfire, but I have no assurance that I'm going to pass it safely. And that is why I cried. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari in his tafsir mentioned a, uh, a story of Abu Maysara. May Allah have mercy upon him. Whenever he used to put his head on, on his pillow and lie down, getting ready to sleep, he would weep and say, I wish my mother never gave birth to me. His family would ask him, why? He said, Allah informed me that I'm going to pass over hellfire. But I have no guarantees, no assurances that I'm passing it safely. That I'm going to go beyond it, safely untouched. Look at the concern these people had. Rightfully so, because the description of hell and the punishment of hell that we were informed about, either in the Qur'an or in the Sunnah, are enough to make a person, male or female, Think of nothing but how to save him or herself from such punishment. The Prophet ﷺ and torture and punishment for the disbelievers and the transgressors and the sinners is of different forms. One of them is emotional, and one is physical, and so on. One of the emotional punishments of hell is that hell will be seen from a far distance. The Prophet ﷺ said, as narrated by Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, and is reported by Al-Hakim and Ahmed, and Shaykh al arnaut ruled it to be a sound narration. He said the disbeliever will be able to see hellfire from a distance that is a journey of 40 years. He will be able to see hellfire from that far a distance and he will be certain that he is going to be punished in it. 
Can you imagine the kind of fear he will be experiencing for these 40 years? He can see it from that far. Knowing that this is going to touch me. That hell is going to punish me. That fire is going to burn me. And that is only one form of punishment. Let us conclude here and we will resume in the following session with the description of hellfire. وَأَخْرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ